What is up, party people? Today in this video, I'll be showing you guys a game-changing plugin that will boost your website speed and performance with one click. I have more than 50 WordPress plugins installed on my website, and I'm getting a 99% page speed score on the Google PageSpeed Insights. I'm also getting a 97% page speed score on GT Metrics and a 95% performance grade on tools.pingdom. So I've been using this plugin on my website for about two to three months. Me and my developer, we were trying out other various plugins and we came across one plugin that just really just blew us out of the water. And after installing this plugin, we never had to worry about performance or optimization because this plugin does it all. And you've probably seen videos like this before, but this plugin is actually quite unique. It offers all of the optimization settings that you can possibly need for your website. So let me show you guys my website and then let me show you guys our page speed score. So here is my website, and as you guys can tell, I have 52 active plugins installed. Now, I know I'm kind of a hypocrite because a lot of my videos, I tell people to only have 10 plugins installed, but if you guys have good hosting, you guys can have a lot of plugins installed if you guys have good hosting. So uh, you can see that we have 52 active, right? And a lot of these are ACF extensions. I mean, we're running a large operation here. We're selling uh, 250 templates on this website, so we need to have a lot of various plugins uh, to make that work, you know? And here you can see that we have all these are active, right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and scroll up here and I'm gonna refresh this page. I don't want you guys to think I'm like cheating or anything. Like we actually have all these plugins installed on the website and we're using it. So that is the amount of plugins that we have installed, right? And here is the page speed insight score for my website. So we have a 99 and for mobile, we have a 92. We do have a little bit of work to do, but you know, guys, I mean, 92 is still a win, right? We can't get really like anal in one. I want hundred percent for everything. You know, it's like, you'll never get that. Don't, don't, don't you don't want to go there. And then for GT metrics, we have a 97% metrics grade for GT metrics. And for the tools.pingdom, we have a 95% performance grade. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go to a demo website here and we're going to install this free plugin. I'll walk you guys through it. I'll show you guys some of the options. We'll all have fun. And then you guys will have a blazing fast website. Now I do have this plugin installed on my website and I have been using it for about three months. So I can say with confidence that this is a really solid plugin. There is a replica plugin for this or a service that does something similar, but I've, I've kind of part ways with that plugin and I'll talk more about that uh, service a little bit later near the end of the video. A little bit of drama, you know, but we'll, we'll get there, don't worry. So let's go ahead now and go to the dashboard and let me introduce you guys to this free plugin. It's actually not as popular and I think like those are the best ones, right? The ones that are kind of hidden, those are like the ones that are up and coming, you know? And once they get really popular, they start, you know, they get expensive and they do a bunch of like shady stuff, but that's just how it is. So let's go over here to plugins and we'll go to add new. And the plugin that we're going to look for is, it's it's actually kind of a long name, so I'm just gonna type in Excel, right? A-C-C-E-L, all right? And here is the plugin that we are going to install. It is called the Seraphonite Accelerator. Turn on site, oh, wait, wait, turn on site high speed to be attractive for people and search engines. All right, so let's do that. Now we're gonna click on install now, and then we're going to activate the plugin. All right, and once we install the plugin, you guys might get some error notices. But that's because we need to configure the options in the plugin. So let's now scroll down. Just keep scrolling. Oh, no, it's right here. Uh, accelerator. Here, I'll just click on Accelerator. Now, what's really cool is they have a setup wizard and everything. But the first thing that you guys will need to do is you guys will need to download the free extended plugin version of this plugin. I don't know why that is, but uh, that's just how they do business. So let's just go ahead and click on the download the free extended plugin version. And it's gonna take you to their website. And all you gotta do here is just click on download for free. And then you're gonna take this plugin and then replace it, right? So let's go ahead and I'll allow it. Here, I'll go back over here. And now we're going to upload that same plugin. And all it's gonna do is just going to replace it. I think there is some weird WordPress loophole or some maybe rule that WordPress had where they said you can't, you know, have the plugin with this feature. So they make people go to the websites. Very similar to like themes and starter templates and stuff like that. So now I'm going to upload that plugin. So I click on choose file. Here is the plugin, open, install now. Okay, so now you'll see that it wants to replace it. And right here, I'll click on replace current with uploaded. Click on go to plugin installer. 
All right, now we're ready to go through the setup wizard. So right here, let's click on begin setup wizard. Now, the first thing is what kind of functionality do you need? So there is the full functionality. This includes optimization of all of your HTML, lazy load, uh, inline CSS. It can reduce the image sizes and replace them with WebP formats. Or if you just wanna use this for a basic caching plugin, you guys can do that as well. But why would you guys do that, right? Let's just go with the full functionality, you know, like what are you stupid? So let's go ahead and click on the full functionality here and click on next. And then right here, you can run a little diagnosis to make sure that you are meeting these specific server requirements like maximum execution time, memory limits, stuff like that. If you guys are using any of my recommended hosting, then you guys are probably in the green. If you guys are not, well, then you guys can go with SiteGround or Name Hero or Hostinger. I will leave a link to those hosts in the description below of this video. So let me go ahead and just wait for this really quick. All right, cool. So you guys will see that the plugin should work correctly, right? They do have this one small notification saying you can change your memory limit to two gigs, but that is actually really high. I think 512, 512, 7868 is optimal. Anything more than that, that's a little too high in my book. So let's go ahead now and click on next now that we have met all the requirements. All right, so now we have the optimization mode. We have always a high score and then we have always up-to-date content. Now, if you guys are making changes to your website every day, like you're adjusting prices or you're constantly you know, adding stuff to your website and changing dates and stuff like that, then the always up-to-date content would be the optimal setting for you. If you guys are an agency and you guys make changes to your website maybe once a week or something like that, then always high score would be a better fit for you. So I don't make a lot of changes on websites, obviously. I probably, you know, maybe make a change on my website like once a week or something like that. So I'm gonna select the always a high score and click on next. And then here we have the, what is the performance of the site's hosting? So if you guys are using something like shared hosting, then this would be good for you. If you guys are, you know, using a dedicated server or a virtual dedicated server, then medium or high would be a better fit for you. But I think most of us would be using just like cloud or shared because I think that's like ideal for most websites. So right here, I'll click on low and then click on next. Is the layout of the site universal for all types of devices? Now, for most people, you're gonna select no. This is referring to like static websites where it looks the same on all devices. And I don't think that's the case with most websites today. Most people optimize their websites for mobile and tablet. So if you guys obviously have a optimized website for various devices, you guys would select no. And then right here, I'll click on next. Now, if you guys have a CDN, you guys can link it here. Now, I actually contacted SiteGround about this and I asked, you know, hey guys, where is my CDN URL? And they told me it was just the URL of my website. I could be wrong here, but I was on live chat with uh, SiteGround and they told me that this option here, they weren't even sure of. So they told me just to put the URL of the domain. All right, so that's my best advice. I'm just repeating what they said and I'm forwarding it to you guys. All right, so right here, we'll click on next. Now it's saying, now the whole site optimization can be run. Run optimization on all sites pages. Here, I'll click on finish. And just like that, your website is now fully optimized with the best optimization settings. Now there's some other options that you guys can tinker around with to really push the limits of the optimization settings for this plugin. So we have five different other options. You have the cache, the scripts, the CDN, content, exclusion, views, and users. Now, most of these options that are checked and unchecked are probably the most optimized uh, boxes to check. You guys can mess around with these, but just be cautious because some of these can break your website if you're not careful. For example, like the Broly compression right here. Now the Broly compression is a more optimized way of compressing files, but it does have more strain on the server. So for that specific reason, it is left unchecked. And honestly, if you even you guys check it, I don't think it's gonna make like a huge difference on your website. Like we're talking about kilobytes here. So it's really not like that huge of a deal. Then you also have revalidation where this is checked as well. And this is going to continually update the website as the users and other search engine bots are calling your website. So it is left checked because that will give users a better visiting experience. And then also we have browser cache where this is just going to kill the cache after a specific amount of time. It's just going to completely get rid of it. So this is always enabled. And then here, if you guys do have a CDN or something like that, you guys can enter this information here for your CDN. And then below that, we have like the license if you guys wanna to upgrade to the pro version and they are spamming us with some other offers, but hey, that's okay because they gave us a really cool plugin. All right, 
And then also we have these scripts and styles. And here is where you guys can get really anal and really uh, further optimize your website depending on what you wanna do. So here you guys can see we can defer non-critical CSS and you can actually set a specific second timeout if you wanna go that route. You can also defer t deep hooks and you can access preloading. Now preloading is essentially when a user comes on your website, you can actually turn this on and the plugin is going to try to preload the entire website for that user. Now, if you guys do decide to do that, it's gonna have a lot of strain on your server and a lot of resources will be used. So if you guys do have a really, really strong server and you want top-notch performance, you can check that. But for most of us, you'll probably leave that unchecked like myself. I don't have that option checked because it is a lot of resources that uh, your server is gonna be using. And then if we scroll down here, oh, they also have fast loading. Now, also, if you guys are not sure what these options are, you guys can click on the little, little question mark thing there. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna take you to that specific section and it's gonna tell you exactly what it does. So for example, it improves the script loading speed by a little bit, but might be compatible with some scripts. So it should be used carefully. So essentially what can happen here is um, some scripts might conflict with others that might lead to crashes. So uh, if you guys do want fast loading or early preloading, you guys can check that. But if your site's getting weird or something like that, just leave it unchecked, right? And if we scroll down, and then below that, we have some more optimization settings. Now, if you guys are not a developer or if you guys are not uh, familiar with CSS, just leave this the way it is. If you guys are a developer and you want to either inline your CSS or if you want to group and combine it with critical CSS, you guys can do that here. Me personally, these are really like nitty gritty options. And I think these really won't have a significant impact on your website's performance. I mean, CSS is extremely thin, you know, it's really, uh, it's not a lot of um, kilobytes loaded on your websites. And then also you have some further customization options for fonts and stuff like that. Also, we have early preloading, which is like we talked about earlier, but that's in beta. So just be mindful about that. And once you're done with those settings, we'll click on save changes. As you guys can tell, the plugin developer did a really good job at leaving specific settings unchecked because uh, they're just really not needed. And those small modifications can really have a big impact on your websites, including breaking it. So just be mindful. Here we have content where it's minifying the HTML. This will actually, uh, early paint is actually when it will try to load the FCP first. So like the largest part of your website, it's gonna really try to optimize and load that part first so that your website will have a better FCP score when you run it through the Google PageSpeed Insights. And also when visitors visit your website, it'll look much smoother. And next we have the images. Now this is a very interesting section. Now, most of you guys, when you load images on your website, they're probably either JPEG or PNG. And yeah, those are probably the two most common. This plugin will actually create replicas of WebP format files and they'll replace that and that will speed up the website. On average, WP images are about 25 to 30% uh, smaller than PNG and JPEG. And as a result, the website should load a little bit faster. But you guys can go a step further here and you guys can further reduce the quality of those images. Now, if your images start to get blurry and stuff like that, then maybe you should readjust the quality of the images. But here I have mine set to 80% and going through the website, it looks identical to what it did before, except now it reduced the quality and it also reduced the amount of kilobytes on those images, resulting in a faster website. And here we'll scroll down. So AVIF is also another image type, but um, I'm not going to enable it because WebP is just as optimal. And um, yeah, I'm just not gonna go there. And next we have lazy load. Now, in case you guys are total noobs and don't know what lazy load is, lazy load will essentially only load specific elements when a user actually scrolls down to those specific elements. For example, if you have a bunch of images at the bottom of your website, there is no need to load those images because the user never scrolled there. So if you have lazy load enabled, uh, it's going to have less strain on the server and that's gonna result in less server requests resulting in a faster website. Now this is a really cool feature right here and this is the corrections for lazy load scripts. Now this plugin will actually embed specific scripts onto these elements and it's going to add lazy load for these specific uh, elements. And that's really cool because lazy load on average is usually only for images and a lot of the elements will still load on the page regardless. However, this plugin will say, no, we will also add lazy load for the smart slider, 
for the tabs of Elementor, for the videos of Elementor, a lot of really cool uh, options here that can further increase the speed of your websites. I thought that was a really cool feature. So uh, yeah, once I uh, make those changes, just click on save changes and we're done. All right, and one of the last options is the exclusion views and users. Now, essentially this is just for like specific users. If you wanna have specific caching options or optimization settings for specific users, this is actually in beta right now. And I actually went to their website and I was reading about it. And they basically said that uh, they recommend that you would contact them if you want to enable this feature. And to my understanding, I believe this is going to have specific caching options for specific users which to me seems like too much, you know, it's like, who's gonna do that? But I mean, hey man, there's people out there. So uh, yeah, once you guys are done with that, we'll go ahead and save all the changes and your website should be loading very fast. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the website here. And as you guys can tell, like the, the images all look great. The images are the same, except now they're being loaded as WebP images and we even reduce the quality of it, but our websites will be loading much faster now. So over here we have the uh, domain and right now we are at a 77 for desktop and a 48% for the uh, mobile. So let's go ahead now and rerun that and just see where we're at, right? So right here, I'll click on analyze and let's run the website through the PageSpeed Insights. And look at that. So we now have a 96% performance grade on Google PageSpeed Insights. And for mobile, we have a 93 performance. So you guys can see that this was a significant upgrade just by installing this plugin. Now guys, I'll be very honest. Um, I personally use this on my website. So I'm not just trying to sell you guys crap that I don't use. Like, no, I really have this on my website. It's done wonders for me. And that's why I'm recommending it because uh, we've just seen great performance on my website. It's done really, you know, uh, a good job for us. So uh, that's why I'm recommending this specific plugin. Now, also let's talk about the pro version, right? So we did talk about the free version and we showed you guys how to install the free version. Now the pro version, there's nothing different in the pro version. So all this is gonna do is basically say, if you guys go over a specific amount of traffic, then you guys will have to upgrade to the pro. But even the pro version is pretty generous. So you'll see if we scroll down right here that um, all of the features are in the free and the pro. The only difference here is the page view limits. So if you guys do go over 5,000 page views a month, it's going to fall back on just being a caching plugin and it's going to stop optimizing your websites. But this plugin is actually pretty affordable. It's not expensive. And there are some other things that it's gonna do in the free version. Like it's gonna add a banner at the way bottom of your website. And then also there are promotions in the back end, like you guys saw earlier. Now, let me show you guys the banner because people are saying, well, there's a banner, like how big is that? It's actually really, really small. And now I'm logged out. And if we scroll to the bottom of the website, you guys will see that there is a tiny banner right here. So it is a very small banner, you know, and um, they got to make money too, guys. You know, everyone here is trying to make money. That's why these guys are making this uh, plugin. But the banner is actually quite small, as you guys can tell. So uh, that is the plugin in a nutshell. I think it's a great plugin to add on your websites. Now there are other plugins and services that have actually done something similar and that I've actually sort of backtraced and I don't really recommend no more. Now, another plugin that I've talked about in the past was the 10 Web Booster. And you guys have probably seen me talk about this on my channel before. Now, recently the 10 Web Booster limited the amount of pages it will optimize. So it only optimizes up to five in the free version. And also to use the product now, you now need to have hosting on their platform. But when they first created the plugin, they allowed you to have unlimited pages and be hosted with anybody. But as they grown in a user base, they have started stripping the features away, which I didn't like. So if you guys are using this and you want, or you know, you're using the free version and you're looking for a replacement, I would definitely recommend the Stephanie Accelerator. I use it on my website and it's worked wonders. All right, party people. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to install this plugin on your website. It'll really change the game of your websites and it'll make it much more faster than probably what it is right now. Also, there is a part two coming to this video. There is another plugin that'll actually change the entire format of your website with just one click, but I'm not gonna talk about it just yet, but I will leave that video in the description below of this video once I make it. So make sure to like this video and subscribe and stay tuned. My name is Daryl Wilson. I will see all of you guys in the next video. Take it easy.